So, did you spot any differences in how the two volcanoes look? Oh. So, did you spot any differences in how the two volcanoes look? Hopefully you're able to notice that the exploding kind of volcano, well, at least before it explodes, it's shaped like this, like a tall cone. So let's call these the cone volcanoes. But what about the shape of the other kind of volcano, the kind that doesn't explode, the more gentle erupting kind? Notice how these <coughs> volcanoes tend to be wide, but not as tall. Scientists call these shield volcanoes because one of the first ones ever discovered was noted by the Vikings in Iceland who thought that it looked like the shape of one of their battle shields when set down on the ground. Personally, they remind me more of the top of an umbrella, but we'll go with the word shield because that's the word that scientists use. There was a second difference you noticed between these two volcanoes, and that's how their rocks look. The rocks of the cone volcano, the kind that explodes, are all pale or light colored, like pale pink or pale tan. Scientists call these pale colored rocks felsite. But the rocks that come from the shield volcano, the kind that doesn't explode, are all dark colored, dark gray or black. Scientists call these dark colored rocks basalt. So we still don't know why one kind of volcano explodes and the other one erupts gently. But we do know that the two volcanoes each have their own shape and each have their own kind of rock. That brings us to a really big clue. It turns out that the reason for the two different rocks are because these volcanoes actually are erupting two different kinds of lava. One of the lavas looks like this. It moves pretty quickly because it's thin and runny. It's kind of like syrup or honey in how it flows. A couple of scientists in New York recently made a device where they can take some of the rocks from the thin, runny kind of lava and melt them turning the rocks back to lava again. This is what it looks like. They pour it out, and they observe it up close. And they can do all this without having to travel to a volcano. You see how thin and runny this stuff is? But now, the other kind of lava is like this. It's thick and pasty. It might shoot out steam and fire. You can see this is a video taken at nighttime. But you notice how the lava itself just sort of sits there? It has the thickness of a material like toothpaste or peanut butter. It doesn't flow or move much at all. So which lava belongs to which type of volcano? Does the cone volcano erupt thin, runny lava or thick, pasty lava? And could the differences between these two kinds of lavas explain the differences we've been seeing between the two kinds of volcanoes? Today, you're going to do an experiment to figure out the answer to that question yourself. All right, so this is where we are going to need our materials. We got them. Do we have to take the papers off? Yep, so let's take our lava experiment that looks like this. We're going to take that off this sheet and set it beside us. So we are able to run lava. Our plate, the plates can stay on there for now. But just take the take our sheet and just set it to the side. Make sure that we do write our name on the front and back, right? We do that right now. If you like, yes. Yep, let's do it right now so we do not forget. question of the day. The question is, do these two kinds of lavas explain why there are two kinds of volcanoes? Okay, it's time to get started. I'll walk you through the activity step by step. Alright, 
So we are not doing partner. Find a partner in the workplace. When you're done with this step, click the arrow. And we already Copy have our materials. And so we already have our materials for our workspace, which we'll be using our little lunch thing, lunch trays. Get your supplies. Tilt. All right, so what we're going to do is tilt each of our cups. We can pick up one at a time. And we're going to tilt it to see how, if it's thin or thick. And when you identify it, put it in the circle that you see on your other page. So you guys can talk among yourself for, I'll give you 30 seconds. So it runs easily. Thin means it runs easily. Very liquidy. Thick means it might take a, a minute or two when you tilt it. Done. For them to figure it out. It looks like pancake batter. It does look like pancake batter. I'll figure it out. All right. Time to so from here experiment do your lava worksheets when the class is done clean up and then discuss the question on the next slide all right so from here we are going to um, come out of this room and we are going to get out our sheet of paper and we're going to do this together So lava experiment number one. Bubbles form in lava as it rises from deep underground. With the straw, you can add bubbles to your lava. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up our straws and we're going to attempt to blow bubbles in each of our cups. What we're not gonna do is go crazy. We're gonna blow a few bubbles. Don't go crazy, do not drink this. Why? Do not drink this. Yeah, drink the water. Do not drink the water or the other substance that is in the cup. You are to blow bubbles only. Okay? All right, so let's try and blow our bubbles. You can unmask for a second to be able to blow your bubbles. So we're going to. That is so weird. Oh, no. It's just the stirrets. Yep, so you can stir it and then you blow your bubbles. Oh my God. Yep, so you stir it with your straw. <laughs> okay, now time for the thick. That's very good. Ew. Just forget to not in just blow out. Do not inhale. It makes weird bubbles on top. That's okay. from, uh, Mr. Lisa's cake. The bubbles pop in the thick one. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, has everybody tried our thick and our thin yet? Yep. I just got one thick. Now I need to do a. <laughs> and when you're done with your straws, and you could just set them to the side on that piece of paper. What piece of paper? Our piece of paper that they're already sitting on. That our cups are sitting on. It smells like pancake batter. Is it? Is it pancake batter? Alright. Alright, so let's move on to the next question. So, based on up, one, two, three. So, based on our experiment of us blowing bubbles into our cups, which lava is easiest to blow bubbles into? The thin. The thin. We said a lot. Yep, so we're going to. The thin. Circle our thin. <laughs> I bet it wouldn't be easy in real life. All right. So it says that we try and blow just one bubble in each cup. So we're going to pick up our straw and try to blow just one bubble. Not a lot. Just one. You can't blow one. You got to try. You got to try. Let's go. Oh. 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 Yep, so we're gonna try and I'm gonna try my yeah, thick one too. I did it. 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 I did it.
hard. This okay. is hard. So, so Kaden, we are supposed to be blowing bubbles in our cups. So we're going to take our straw again and try and blow one bubble. Got it. Yep, use it. Just do this and just blow. You just put it back in there because it's not like we're going to drink it. So it's, so it's perfectly fine. Are you doing it, Kaden? Look at that. All right. So we're going to move on to question three. So can you do, can you blow one bubble in the thin water? Yeah. able to blow just one bubble in it's the really thin water. Hard. Yeah. So if we think about it, it was really hard to just try and blow one bubble bubble but yes. and not multiple bubbles. But yes you can. But it is possible. So you guys are gonna fill that out. Still hard. I did that the first try. Impossible but hard. I did that the first try. Ow. I did yes. one bubble and two bubbles. So we're saying yes, but it's hard, right? Yes, I can do Why do we think it's so hard? Because if you, like, in a real volcano, it would go. Okay. It's hard to not blow multiple bubbles, correct? Alrighty. Yes. And so, can we do it with our thick one? I think it was pretty easy for us to just blow one bubble in our thick one because it took yes, a lot of power. It was very yeah? easy. And we're going to make sure you guys explain why you guys think it was easy on both. So do we know how the bubble... So do we know how the bubbles are different in each lava, in different yes. lavas? So we said our thin, <clears throat> our thin ones create a lot of bubbles, right? Yes. Yeah. So our thin, oops, create a lot. Bubbles. Right? And then our thick one. Did you stop doing Oh, yep. Okay. Can you see Kenny? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of hard to see, but I can see it. But... And our thick one creates fewer bubbles, but they're bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Was an easy task. T A S A N. Next to was. An. A N. Oh. I got thing. I got the stick on my arm. It dries fast. What? I got a little bit. All right. So do we need a few? Oh, so do I need to zoom in for you? So it says our thin lava creates a lot of bubbles. Our thick lava creates fewer, bigger bubbles. Can you see now? Yeah, 
Okay. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to move our, we're going to use, use both of our plates. We're going to spread them out. Okay. And do we see our spoons? Everybody should have two plates. So we're just moving, yep, just like that. Just moving to the side. So we're going to take our spoon. Are you all set, Katie? We're going to unfreeze this for you. For our second experiment, we are going to take a spoonful of our thin lava and put it on a plate. So just one spoonful. I will give it to you. Give me just a second, Katie. I'm going to put it on a plate. Yep, and then we're going to try with our spoon to make a mountain. Let's see if we can make a... It's so hard. Yep, so try and make a mountain. And if you can't, so we're going to draw a, a box in our box next to it. We're going to draw how we think our mountain shape turned out. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to give you a few minutes to go through that. And when you're done drawing your picture of how you think your thin mountain shape volcano turned out. We're going to move on to doing it with our thick lava. So I'm going to do it with you. My screen is frozen for Caden, so. Oh, wait. Wait for that one. So, it kind of looks like that. So mine kind of looks like, like that. Not really. Not really anything. We're doing the thin one right now. Mine's like just a flat line. Mine's a flat line. Yeah, mine looks, it looks a little, because I've been trying to move it, so it looks, Right? Yes, Tessa. Yes. So now that you guys have drawn the water. The thin is the water. Yep. And so now we're going to, yep, so we're going to move on to our thick one. This is one full, right? Yes, just one spoonful. And then we're going to try and move it into a mountain. Yeah, this might be a little easier. Okay. Yep, and don't forget to raise our hands if we have any questions. Yes. On the other plate. Yep, we're going to use the other plate. Yep, one spoonful. Addison, how we doing? And then we're going to try and move this one. You can use two spoonfuls if you want. Yes. But you can't really see how it's. And we're going to try and move it. A little bit more, just extra there. I can't make a mountain. It's actually really hard to do it with a mountain, too. It's so sticky and so hard. <coughs> That's not hard. Right? It's, it's sticky. So we're trying to move it into our mountain. Like, make it, try and make the shape with your spoon as best as you can. Oh, look at that. Yours is nice and thick. I don't think Miss Elisa's is. Oh, Mine's like really I got mine like mine is like little, little mine is Yeah, mine is looking more shieldy then. Yeah, I know. I think yeah, Landon's is looking looking a little more cony. Mine's looking more Mine is looking more of a shieldy. Mine's just like a Let me see. Yeah. Mine's liquidy. Yeah, mine's is a little liquidy too. But it's okay. Mine is fine. Yep. So is anybody getting the shape of a cone? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And so don't forget to draw on our on our number six. It says repeat step and make sure you draw how you think it turned out. I can't even use his arm anymore. Okay. That looks a little bit of a shape. 
Yeah. Yeah, but it looks higher than the other one, right? So you know some of ours are a little liquidy. <laughs> yeah, so, so do we see how it might be a little higher than our thin ones though? Yep. So make sure we draw our picture. I'm going to give you 30 more seconds to play around with it. Yes, I'm sorry. That's a Oh wow! So it's going like a bubble. Okay. This is so fun about. Alrighty, we're gonna come back. All right. Do we make sure? All right. So let's put this aside and draw our pictures. Make sure we draw our pictures. Where do I put it? No, just put it back on. Keep it on here. And just move your tray to the side, and we're gonna work on our worksheet. I don't have my worksheet. <laughs> All right, so number seven says one, two, three. Please call the office. Mrs. Rupert, please call the office. So, all right, we're going to look back up here. All right, so number seven says, what kind of lava do you think shield volcanoes have? Nine. The liquidy. All right, let's make sure we raise our hands. Yes, Hudson? Thin. The thin one, okay. Yep, and why do we think? That the shield volcanoes have the thin ones. Because in the picture it shows shield shaped volcanoes, and you said those ones are thin and easy to move around. Okay. Yep, so make sure we put our reasoning on that. Yeah, <laughs> yep, so take a few minutes to write down our answers. Things you were writing on there, but that's part of our lab. Mm So wrap up your thoughts for number seven. We're going to move on to number eight. Okay. So why? Let's see this like. So what kind of lava do you think cone volcanoes have? And let's make sure. Yes, Courtney. Uh, the cone volcanoes have the thick because when it comes out of a hole, it goes like a. Like a so we think it's thin, or we think it's thick, because it has a construction. Okay, so alrighty. So while you got, you guys are wrapping that up. to go back to our video to see. Oh. Discuss this question. All right, now that we've done some experiment, experiments, which kind of lava do you think you will find in a cone volcano, which we already talked about? And we put our answers on there. So we're gonna move on to our final little video here. So, were you able to figure out anything about what kind of lava comes from each volcano? Yes. Which kind of volcano has the thin, runny kind of lava? The lava on the left there. Well. Oh, oh sorry. Tessa, yes. The cone. The cone? We think the cone has the runny kind of lava. All righty. Let's imagine a crack in the ground. And let's imagine that lava is shooting out of it. If that lava is thin and runny, it will flow nice and smoothly. 
and it will spread out into a big pile, just like in your experiment when you spooned your thin lava onto the plate. Doesn't the shape look familiar? Thin lava forms shield volcanoes. But imagine that the lava shooting out of the crack was thick and pasty instead. Because it's thick and pasty, it can't flow as easily when it comes out. So instead of spreading out, it will just kind of fall down into a pile. Splat. It piled up into a tall mountain shape, a cone. Look familiar? Thick lava forms cone volcanoes, just like it did in your experiment. So now you understand the differences between these two volcanoes. Shield volcanoes have a thin, runny lava that cools into a dark colored basalt rock. And cone volcanoes have the thick, pasty lava that cools into the pale felsite rock. But this only explains the shapes of the volcanoes. What we still don't know is why do cone volcanoes sometimes explode the way this one is doing here? The answer to this question is in the bubbles. Let me explain why we had you blow bubbles in your experiment. Inside a volcano is mostly melted liquid rock, but it sometimes also has gases in it, which make bubbles in the lava. So imagine you could look inside of a shield volcano, like this, which has thin lava. When bubbles form in thin lava, they travel up to the top pretty quickly, and they pop. You saw the same thing when you blew bubbles in thin lava in your experiment. Lots of bubbles reached the top really quickly. Plus, it was really easy to blow the bubbles. That's important to notice. The bubbles didn't have any trouble at all escaping the thin liquid and then popping at the top. But in thick lava, something different happens. Imagine we could look inside of a cone volcano now, which has thick lava. This is the kind of volcano that explodes, remember? This type of lava doesn't flow very well, and the thick and pasty lava tends to plug up the top of the volcano. It forms kind of hard crust at the top. When bubbles form in this lava, watch what happens. You can't escape, and more and more bubbles will come, but they'll all get trapped at the top. The bubbles try to escape, but they can't, so pressure builds up and builds up, and this can go on for months, years, sometimes even hundreds of years, until one day the pressure is too great, and boom, the volcano explodes. You saw the same thing in your experiment. It was hard to blow bubbles in the thick lava. You couldn't even see the bubbles for a while. All the bubbles were trapped under the surface until, boom, all the bubbles exploded out all at once. Bubbles in thick lava are the reason why the cone volcanoes explode. So we've solved the mystery. Let's look at that picture of Mount St. Helens again. Before it exploded, remember, and then after. So now we can understand. The thick lava inside the volcano trapped so many bubbles that the top and sides of the volcano eventually blew out, sending bits of hot rock everywhere. Now you may think that once a volcano like this has exploded, that's the end of its story. But it's not. In the time since 1980, since the eruption, Mount St. Helens has been slowly building itself back up again. Look at this. Do you see that? There's a little baby cone volcano forming right in the middle of the old explosion spot. It'll surely be a long time before the pressure inside this gets too great, but one day, Mount St. Helens will explode again. So that is how ex volcanoes explode and how their lava is, right? So we learned, what did we learn today about our volcano? Is that some of you guys already knew? Yes, Now we found out that our bubbles and our thick lava they form a crust at the top, and when our bubbles are trying, to, our bubbles of gas are trying to get out, and they can't. They just sit there and sit there, and like he said, they can sit there for thousands of years and hundreds of years. They never, never ever erupt, and then one day 
they get some, they just explode. And these are things that scientists sit and watch daily, every day, those mountains that do not explode and haven't exploded for a long time, we call those dormant because they are sleeping, is what we call those are, they're in hibernation, is what we call them in first grade. We call them hibernation volcanoes. So they're sleeping and they're sleeping, but eventually they will wake up and there will be very big explosions. And, and like, angry. yep, it's very, it's an angry volcano. Yep, and our thin volcanoes, they just flow like water. They just flow out. They're water volcanoes. Yep, they're our water or our, our happy tear volcanoes. I like the part is how we explain them in kindergarten. I like the part of lava where it's just like, you know, the crust on top and like, mm -hmm. rings apart. We're all sitting here. Yeah. 